All right, let's give this a shot. I'll let everybody kind of join in. Hey, Ozzy, do me a favor and see if uh, see if that's like smoother. Does that look a little bit smoother? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now I'll wait for some people to get in the room, and then we'll go from here. That's all right, you'll be able to catch the replay. The replay is gonna be on Periscope for 24 hours, but after Periscope, if you can't catch the replay, you can always catch it on catch.me, K-A-T-C-H dot me, and then under search, search dream come true canine, and you'll be good to go. All right? So it looks like some people are getting in the room. That guy knows what he's doing. It's me. <laughs> um, thank you, thank you, Balance. Did you catch that uh, that video, the recent YouTube video, mind? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, Andrew just reminded me the skills competition is on. You guys are gonna get cut cut short. Priorities. You have a question? Save it for the end, brother. We're gonna we're gonna jump into something. Uh, here in a little bit, you guys are gonna get cut real short. <laughs> okay, so this topic is just a concept, it's just a thought that I've had and, and I, I think things resonate more with people. Thank you, that's me, that's me walking dogs in uh, California. That's actually at um, the Dog Psychology Center in Santa Clarita. That's when I was holding down the fort. Um, okay, so this topic is going to be about choosing good influences for your dog over bad ones, even though the situation is seemingly still the same. For example, growing up, my parents always wanted me to be outside, and I was. I was always playing sports. They loved that by being outside and playing sports, and being amongst different people playing different sports, I was social. And, I, and that was going to have an overall good influence. They wanted me to make more friends. At the same time, they were still picky and chose what group of friends I could hang out with. Because although they wanted me to make more friends, although they wanted me to be more social and, and develop even more social skills, they also knew that certain groups more than likely, more than likely, this wasn't even a guarantee, wouldn't be a good influence on me for whatever reason. Some kids were smoking cigarettes, some kids cursed too much, some kids um, got into trouble, some kids were disrespectful with their parents. Who knew what it was? Even though they were still kids, even though they were still outside all the time, my parents didn't think it was a good idea because it wasn't how they wanted me to make friends or how they wanted me to kind of head in that direction, right? So I thought about this and I was like, wow, you know what? This is exactly the same as, and this is, this is the struggle that we have when we're working with our dogs more often than not. One of the first examples that comes to mind is let's say our dog is not the best with other dogs and we want the dog to be more social, right? So what we do is we bring it to dog parks or, you know, we know that this group of friends is the only dogs around and they're super high energy, they're not the best socialized and stuff, and we, we bring them into that clique and that group of dogs anyway. We know the daycare is a little bit of a free-for-all and it's kind of a no-holds barred and it's like chaos, but we bring them there anyway when the reality is more often than not, those gr that group of dogs isn't the best influence for my dog even though I want him to learn to be around dogs. So. It's nothing special. I haven't thought the topic through. It was just something in my head and sometimes some of these are gonna be shorter than others, but that's the basic concept. It's understanding that sometimes restricting your dog from just needing every single dog, just because your dog is not the most social doesn't mean that you need to introduce your dog to every single dog that it sees because that doesn't necessarily make sense. Some dogs aren't necessarily a good influence for your dog. So you have to be smart, especially in the early stages, and you have to set them up for success. Exactly. So it, that's why it's so important to find training programs that are not just, you know, that 
that cheap kind of route and like this and doesn't mean it's the most expensive either but it's people that are aware of how to do things and and aware of the process you know like we're going to be working we just got a new board and training today we're working on getting that, him to be much more social but we're not even considering like for the next couple of days like like putting him in social environments like in social settings because he's not ready for that yeah, and, and, and that's not yeah, and and exactly. So Chelsea, you know, we've had a Skype session and stuff, and you're doing you're doing really good. That's not to say that like daycare in general, but you know exactly what I mean because that's one of, what one of our Skypes were about when the average daycare just isn't an ideal setting, but it can be, all right. And that's what you're working on right now too, and and a lot of it has to do with you know choosing the right kind of clients initially. So you're definitely on the right track, and I love it. But um, it's something for us to consider. You know, just because our dog is struggling with something doesn't mean that we need to throw them into that right away. Just because my dog is not good with people doesn't mean that I want to bring him or necessarily. And we, I just did a, 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 a periscope about how flooding could be beneficial. But at the same time, just because my dog is not good with people doesn't mean I'm going to bring him to the barbecue. When there's so much chaos going around, it might not, he might not be ready for that. It might come a time, there might be a time where, okay, this is, this is a lot of pressure, there's a lot going on, but you're at the point where this challenge is something that you need because you're ready for it. You're ready for the extra weight if you're like bench pressing at the gym. In the beginning, you weren't ready for it, right? So it's kind of understanding where you are and what's gonna be a good influence and what's gonna help set the dog up for success. I might not wanna bring my dog into Times Square so he can learn to kind of learn to get by. That type of flooding might not be ideal. You know what I mean? So you have to know, okay, is this gonna be a good influence based on where I am and based on where I am in the relationship with the dog, how relevant I am, how much he can trust me and what he knows and is already expected of him or her, right? So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna do another topic on Periscope. If you guys are lucky, I'm gonna do it later on tonight. It's gonna be a little bit of a late night sesh, but I'm just gonna end it on that note. Um, what we'll do is we'll do a little Q&A. There's, there's 24 people in this room, the hearts are flowing. I love it, keep those hearting those hearts. If you're not hearting, you're asking a question. After that, you're hearting away. So um, we'll, we'll get into the questions right now. I might do another Periscope later on this evening. All these topics are gonna be juicy. They're gonna be good. This is, this is just like kind of a thought. So I just said, hey, why not Periscope it? But ask your questions, guys. And then I have to get a new dog out that um, you can't get a collar on and off. So that's going to be uh, interesting. I think about my next personal dog all the time, actually. Um, you know, that's a, that's a really interesting topic. So the question was, have you thought about your next dog, personal dog, any specific breeds? Um, we lucked out with this guy. He was just, I guess he qualifies as a rescue because we just got him. And we were like, yeah, that works. Um, as much as I love to adopt and as much as I love you know, rescues and stuff, I also don't think that it's a bad thing um, to find a reputable, reputable breeder and grab a puppy and, and, and get a specific breed. Like that, that's unfortunately kind of you know, uh, looked, looked down upon, right? I have spoken about this with Andrew and uh, you guys are talking about Dutch Shepherds. I'm gonna get in, into that in a second. I, um, a, a, a large part of me wants to get, like if I didn't live in a city, would get like every single like different breed that is like known for being like two, like I, I, would, I, would, I would get a Shiba Inu and I would have that dog like super solid, free, running off leash and free. I would get like a Husky and the same thing. All like the, the things that people say can't be done, I would get that breed and I would do it. I would have the Pitbull that was like super, super great with dogs, super soft, super gentle. I would get, um, I would have that dog to the point where I would trust it around my newborn baby. Um, and I actually thought, what's up bro? I actually thought about my next dog being a pit bull and there's pros and cons to that because if I had a pit bull, I would 100% have it not have a um, aggressive or even protective, like loyalty protective bone in its body. I would 100% pre uh, present or prevent that. But I do have a problem with that also because as sweet as my dog is. So you guys all know Soko, you know he's a sweetie pie. He's like, I can literally, he could be like, bone could be in the middle of chewing like a, a, a marrow bone. And blindly, with my hands tied behind my back, I can walk into his face and push it and he would probably just give me like kisses if, if anything, if not walking away. But at the same time, if my wife was jogging, 
at like 2, 4 a.m. in the morning um, and somebody tried to whatever, like mug her or, or who knows what, my dog ain't letting it happen. And when I think about that, there's something about that that I love and I wouldn't want to subject a pit bull to that because even if the pit bull saved my wife's life, the fact that it bit somebody, later on it's gonna, it could be a different side of the story and that pit bull bit somebody. There's something as silly as it sounds about working breeds where like for example a German Shepherd who's a sweetheart, he's a working dog, he's a service dog, I'm a trainer that's like a sweetie pie, he has all these videos up and then someone tries to, to mug or I don't know like rape my wife like, like some like derelict or something and then my dog attacks that will be in the paper as the dog that saved the day because of the breed and it's sad to say it but it's really really true um, so because of that I would, I would lean more toward having like a Dutch Shepherd. I don't necessarily want a Belgian Malinois just because a lot of them are, are, are really high drive. I would want a, a more lower energy, which is still, for, for that breed, still like high drive compared to any other breed, but Dutch Shepherd, because it would be the sweetest dog on the planet, would be great with dogs, would be great with people, everything, but at the same time, um, I, I would train it to to you know be responsibly uh, protective. And that's, a, that's, that's the, the dangerous thing is a lot of people claim that they do protection work and stuff and this and that and they're like look how protective my dog is and look how defensive their dog their dog is now I'm, this is not my profession but i have done this like personally like my dog does have a bite word and attack word and stuff even though that's not my field of expertise um but i would like i know that a good like protection dog is a dog that is minimally defensive a lot of all these people think like the junkyard dog that will attack on Will or the, the, the dog that is like always on the defense is like a good dog. That's a ticking time bomb. I don't want the dog that like when I'm in a public setting is always like this, like waiting to make their choice. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that confident dog that really doesn't care, chills out, uh, somebody leans over to me and they observant, but you know, no big deal. Like that's the dog that I want. And then if something happens, then that's a different story. Um, So because of that, I would want a, a, a breed that has a little bit more uh, is a little bit more accepted, a little bit more accepted in, in, with the public. And unfortunately, the pit bull is not, which is why I would want a pit bull to prove people wrong. But at the same time, it's, if it's my personal dog, I don't want it to just look intimidating. I don't care how it looks. I just want it to know that if, if need be, it can throw down. Just like myself, if need be, I can throw down. But but you hope to never see that that day, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, and and that's what you're looking for, and a lot of people don't know that, right? So hopefully that answers your question. Um, probably a Dutch, probably a Dutch. I don't know, could be a, a German Shepherd too. I could go hit up the monks, and uh, and and look for that for, for the right the right dog that that matches my lifestyle and stuff. I'm a pretty high energy guy, but you know, not through the roof. Um, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, you know what? I I would I would like a Mal, but it would be a Dutch just because like. The, the mouths are too popular now everybody's getting them and I kind of don't want to be that you know like oh he just got it because of this and that and then the movie Max came out too so like there's gonna be a lot of bad breeding for that as well so I probably just don't want them out like I, I do enjoy Dutch Shepherds though I think they're pretty great yeah and and some of those brindle colors are like super rad like some of them look like like a mixture of like a fox a wolf and like an African wild dog right so it's pretty cool what other questions do you have guys Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what you can do is you need to take control of the situation. Um, and one of the easiest ways to do that, unfortunately, this is not something that I can like just answer here. Like, oh, well, you just do this. You, you need to start putting in work. And there's a, a variety of different ways that you can do that. One of the things that I would suggest is spending time watching videos. Um, go to our YouTube channel. It's all free too. So I mean, it's either a matter of you putting in the time or not because it's not like you're getting, you're getting charged for it. Um, start watching our Dog Behavior Question Tuesday episodes from the very beginning. I'd say from episode three all the way through and, and learn from that, from what we say because you need to develop and establish super, super, super solid foundation work as a as a priority, um, as, as a priority of found, I'm sorry, one second, 
as a prior priority foundation. I was just, there was a little guy that was sketchy by our window. I wanted to see what he was up to. Um, before you go to address, address the issue. The, the bottom line, like the short answer is stop letting it happen and why are you allowing it to happen? But if dogs are doing it around you and you're not relevant, then that's what you have to work on. You have to work on becoming relevant and the foundation work, less freedom, you have to control that. But not less freedom where you're avoiding things, less freedom until they begin to start earning it. And you're in a position where they respect you as a priority, as like middle name relevant versus like, I listen to you until. You cannot have that, all right? So yeah, that, that, that's, if, if you really want, we can set up a Skype session. I do a lot of Skype sessions with people that either can't get me out to them or they can't get out to me and stuff. Um, and you can email um, Jen, and the email is info at dctk9.com. So that stands for dream come true, letter K, number nine, dctk9.com. Info at dctk9.com, or go to the website, send an inquiry, say you're interested in a Skype session. Then we can have an hour of Skype, and we can walk through things a little bit more in detail. Um, you botched that out, dctk9.com. But thank you for putting that up. Um, just missed the T. That's it. What other questions do we have, guys? Yeah, so that, that's a good question. Thank, thanks for correcting that uh, balance. Everything that I do, with the exception of my personal Facebook page, which is Blake Rodriguez, is the company name dream come true canine um our periscope dream come true canine like the at handle is dream come true canine instagram dream come true canine facebook company page dream come true canine youtube dream come true canine so um it just makes it easier for us to find if you can never find that then if you type in blake rodriguez that might pop up in some situations and but but it's pretty pretty easy to find um for those of you that are tuning in for the first time um, I might have a couple. I'm sure in Dog Behavior Question Tuesday, we've, we've definitely covered it and everything. Um, but we've definitely covered it. Tyler Muto, T-Y-L-E-R-M-U-T-O, has some great, great, great videos called How to Use the Prong Collar. There's parts one and two. Tyler Muto, thanks for typing that up. You're, dude, I gotta start paying you. Um, and then there's conversational leash work. There might be a one and two. And then there's also, he, he does a slightly different variation than what I do, but um, it's called Yield to Me, Follow Me, or Follow Me, Yield to Me. And uh, those are great, great videos to give you a, a, a pretty, pretty good foundation for how the tool should be used and, and just the concepts and the theories and everything. Um, definitely check that out. I know there were some other questions that popped up as I was answering that, so uh, I'll do one more, and then I gotta, I gotta walk, I gotta try to get this dog out of the crate that's probably gonna wanna eat my face. Um, so I'm gonna have to do that in a little bit. Um, I have all 10 fingers now, so we'll see in a bit how that goes. That's gonna be another good, good video. Dog just came in today. <clears throat> we filmed um, some of it, so you guys are gonna get to see. If you guys didn't see our recent YouTube video, uh, with Johnny. It's titled Johnny Be Good. That's a really cool video because you get an inside look at the dog from the day he was dropped off to the day he went home. Um, solutions for crazy bad crate chewing overnight. So what is he chewing? Is he chewing the actual crate or is he chewing stuff that's inside the crate? Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate it. We, you know, we do it We do it for you guys and on everything, on Periscope, on Instagram. Uh, I mean, there, there's just so much. Chewing the actual crate. Well, there's a couple things. Uh, do you have like one of those wire crates that fold? Like the black crates that fold until you open it up and you kind of put it together? Because if you have one of those, we'd probably want to look to maybe get an airline crate. Because a dog really can't chew much except for the bars in front. But the bars in front are sturdier. They're not as like thin and frail. And it's also a cheaper solution than getting one of those like, those like typical that, I forget those really like reinforced like steel um, Mal Belgian Malinois crates. But what you can do is you're, you're going to want to get to a point where you can use a remote collar as a correction. Um, yeah, the Alcatraz crates. But 
you can start using the remote collar as an interruption. So it's something that you would have to monitor. Um, you could do it one or two ways. You can interrupt while you see and don't say anything. You're observing, it could be on a drop cam or a camera. Um, I personally prefer to introduce the remote collar in a way where the dog understands the sensations and what to do and everything and has a remote collar training. That way, by that time, the dog already knows the remote and the sensation they know what to do instead of freaking out more by the time you get to somewhat of a correction. But you also don't need to like pop it on high and like and like like zap a dog. What you can do is you can find the level that is enough in the middle of that to kind of stop them and then that stops and interrupt them. And every single time they do that, so you're giving them that conditioning over and over and over again and then down the road you can go into more a of a superstitious kind of correction where every time they go for it that happens and they, they go okay i know not to act that way if i'm gonna stress let me relax oh i'm just gonna stress i'm gonna go after this boom and then it happens they relax and if you do it enough and you condition enough um the behavior itself is eliminated the anxiety that causes it won't be eliminated but um yeah you probably correct it too high too soon you definitely don't want to rush into that that can be Dangerous. Yeah, you can do baby baby monitor. Um, the drop cam has a slight delay, so you can get good with the delay and, and know how to do it, especially if you're in the vicinity. But um, but yeah, the baby monitor is, is pretty much real time. So if you know what it sounds like, uh, you can definitely definitely interrupt that. So take your time with that. But that would be my advice. I'm gonna do one more question, guys, and then uh, and then maybe a late night uh, periscope session. You know what? Um, how would you train a dog without? That's a great, I'm gonna do the without prong collar, but I'm gonna get into the book question real quick. I have to learn, I'm not much of a big reader, mostly because my reading skills suck. Like I'm a slow reader, I'm like hooked on phonics status. So it's not that bad. I just prefer audiobooks. So I look for things that have audiobooks. I mean, I actually enjoyed Caesar Milan, How to Be a Pack Leader, regardless of whether you like the man or not. I person, I actually do. Um, uh, I've heard uh, the Monks of New Skeet have some really great books out. Um, I forget. There's so many books that are on like lists that I, I don't know off the top of my head, but I'm not a huge, huge book guy. There's there's one um, like series. They're like thick textbooks. It's like a series of six or seven of them, and they're like $100 each. I have to find out who it... Somebody sent it my way a, a while ago or told me about it, and then Josh Moran, actually, Barefoot Dog Trainer, just... Uh, got one of them. I'm not sure if he got through it, but I, I got to find out uh, about that. But the question was, how would you, how would you learn, or how would you train a dog without a remote collar or or a prong collar? And the the reality is the same way. Nothing changes. Um, the only problem that you potentially run into is you limit yourself to a couple things now me personally i don't need anything to train a dog like I, you can give me a slip leash or you can give me a freaking you can give me a cookie or a strawberry and i have the skills to, to do it it's going to be a lot more difficult in a lot of areas and more importantly it's going to be a lot more difficult for clients to replicate it and that's when you run into a problem because the time that it takes to learn something, the time that it takes to do stuff, and, and you are limited. Some people just don't have the skills. Most trainers don't have the skills to kind of to get to that point. So you run some risk. The risk that you run or the limitations that you bump, you fall into when you're not using tools like remote collars is you limit yourself on how soft you can actually be with a prong collar and a remote while at the same time having those tools that have the ability to also be very firm. Those are two of the tools that has such a wide extreme, uh, extreme capabilities, communication capabilities, um, if you will. A lot of others kind of are, are kind of stagnant in some way. So um, most of the work that we do, if not all of it, it doesn't matter whether it's on a prong or not, the remote collar comes later anyway. So that doesn't really matter. Um, working the dog for the food, controlling food as a resource, getting a dog into good habits, teaching the dog what to do way before you teach a dog what not to do. And then if I'm not using like prongs and remotes, when I do have to get into some like nopes and and corrections and, and alterations and stuff, 
I want to make sure that I've already have a dog working for food where negative punishment is really valuable, the removal of something, because by the time I get into positive, uh, positive punishment, I'm going to have to use different sources. And uh, if that's a physical correction or something, I want a dog to already be smooth like butter on a leash. So you have to spend more time on leash work and everything, which could be done. It just takes a lot of time. The problem is if you're not a dog trainer, the average client, the average dog owner doesn't have that much time, especially with dogs that are not so easily happy-go-lucky, you know. Um, so, so that's that's the only issue you run into. But our behavior structure and like what we do, nothing changes. It's not the tools that get the results. It's just the tools that kind of help us. It's kind of like asking, how do you drive a car without power steering? It's the answer is the same way. It's just going to be a little bit more difficult for some people in some areas. You know, how do you ride a horse without the reins? How do you ride a horse bareback? It's still the same concept. You have to hold on to the hair and like do this stuff and it's a little bit more difficult, but it's not saying it can't be done. It's just not everybody's gonna be able to do it as successfully. So sometimes the tools like that, even though they have like, some, sometimes they have like a bad association or something like that, what it does is it, it allows, it allows some clients to actually be softer than they would be or would have been if they weren't using them as crazy as that sounds. So um, some people can't fathom that. They're like, wait, what? My mind is blown. They're, they're going to replay that a couple of times. But that's that's the truth if you know how to use it the right way. All right, All right guys, I got to get this dog out. Um, I'm going to try and keep my fingers. I'm not going to be recording this one, but we'll save that for when we do the next YouTube video. If you haven't seen our recent YouTube video, go to our YouTube page, Dream Come True Canine. Um, it's titled Johnny Be Good. We uploaded it last night. It is a really, really good tools power the people. Very well put. If, if the tool becomes the magic wand, then you 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 take three to five steps, if not ten steps, backwards. So the tools are, are used to help give representation to who you are and what you would like to be in the eyes of your dog. Right. Um, so that's important. All right, guys. Later.